today I'm reviewing the Thank You Farmer Sun Project Skin Relief Sun Cream SPF. That's a long name. I'm not going to remember it. Um, anyway, really quick, I just want to say, purchase these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsors or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com. Join my Patreon community or click on the link below. Okay, really happy to try this one. Thank you, Farmer. I've had really good luck with their sunscreens overall. I had a couple that had a little bit of fragrance in them, but overall I've had really good luck with it. So I thought I'd give this one, new one from them, a try. And I'm pretty happy I did. I'm wearing it today underneath the Dr. Joe BB Cream. Um, anyway, okay, so they say protect skin from damaging UV rays with this plant-based sunscreen that offers SPF 50, PA++++ sun protection. The lightweight formula contains eight relief complex and Centella Asiatica extract to soothe skin, leaving a refreshing finish that's dermatology test and reef friendly. Although the reef friendly thing, I don't come to your own conclusion about it. I'm not necessarily totally sold on some of those chemical, I don't know, there's not a lot of research on it. So come to your own conclusion. Don't listen to me exactly. But anyway, okay, first criteria is packaging. I love the packaging. No issues with it. It's kind of fun. I like the little green color. It's easy to find in my collection. Uh, in terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, I'm not marking them down. It does contain T-butyl alcohol. It is the second to last ingredient list. It's not going to be a problem for almost everybody. So I didn't mark them down. Maybe I need like half points or something like, because I don't think they should be totally punished because it's the second to last ingredient. And to be honest, in sunscreens, I don't mind it as much as I used to. Uh, in terms of the fragrance, there's no fragrance ingredients and no real scent to it. Uh, the manufacturing location for this one is Korea. It's a bit of a liability for sunscreen manufacturers due to the loopholes that have not quite been fixed yet, although it seems like almost all the brands have stepped up on their own and up their game, which is a great thing. That's nice to see, although Korea should close those loopholes, in my opinion. Okay, the SPF is 50 plus, so 50 plus is pretty darn good. Uh, really not much manufactured higher than that, especially in certain countries. I think 50 is the highest they can go. Um, so no issues with that. 50, 30 or above on a daily basis is right where you want to be. Uh, the UVA protection factor is PA with four pluses, which indicates above average UVA protection. The PA++ plus 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 system isn't the best marker because it really doesn't set most of them you'll find are three or four. You re rarely see one that's like one or two. So I just don't feel it is a great indicator, but the UVA filters in this are Uvinol A+, which is a great UVA filter, uh, Tinsorb M, and then uh, Uvisorb HEB, so those all help with the UVA rays. And then let's talk about what those filters mean. Uh, so Uvinol A+, UVA ray absorber designed for very high UVA protection, high photo stability, gives protection the entire UVA range. UVA rays are the ones that age us, UVB rays are the ones that burn us. Then we've got Uvinol T150, very high photostable filter of UV, UVB filters um, in the UVB range. Then we've got Tinsorb M. It's a hybrid filter uh, for both UVB and UVA rays. Um, Tinsorb M sometimes has a bit of a white cast, and we'll talk about the white cast in a second. Uh, then we've got Uvisorb HEB, which is a UVA2 and UVB ray absorber chemical uh, agent, oil soluble, uh, very photo stable. It only loses 10% of its protection abilities in 25 hours when two hours is typically what counts as photo stable. That's why they say reapply after two hours. So, okay, in terms of the white cast, so I'm literally going to apply it to my hand here. So right when you start to apply it, it initially looks like there's going to be a white cast. Although the, once you smooth it into your skin and give it a minute, minute or two to absorb, it ends up being pretty transparent. So it initially looks like it's going to be very white casty, but uh, once it absorbs, I don't notice any white cast. Sets to a pretty transparent finish. So there we go. My hand is pretty tanned. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good indicator. Um, texture, it's got a really nice lotiony texture. Uh, once it soaks in, it says to a natural finish that's non sticky. Ease of use, so there's always debate when do you apply sunscreen? Can you apply it um, <clears throat> as the first part of your routine or the last part of your routine? Some people say differently. You always make it the most uh, 
latest product you can use in your routine. Obviously, most people use a foundation over it, but I don't recommend using it first. I just think it doesn't have a chance to, and the more layers you put over it, the more it can get degraded and things. So I always say apply it as the last step of your routine. Um, this one apply, uh, smooths over skin really nicely, plays well over founda under foundation, over moisturizer. And then in my opinion, for sunscreen reapplication during the day, if you're not gonna start all over and wash everything off, this is a nice one. It tends to apply pretty decently over foundation. It may peel a little bit over powdery products, but overall for reapplication, this is one of the more um, favorable products for that. So always nice because it's hard to find ones that you can just reapply over. Okay, beneficial ingredients in this one, uh, niacinamide, skin brightening, anti-acne, barrier repairing ingredient. We've got obviously centella asiatica extract, antioxidant, skin soothing, wound repairing, hydrating. We've got chia seed extract, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory ingredient. We've got Rose of Jericho, which actually I don't really see that often in a lot of products. Mostly I see it in some K-Beauty products, but I rarely come across it. But uh, it's shown that this plant, it's, I think it's a shrub, deciduous shrub or something. Deci is that, is deciduous shrub, is that a thing? What is deciduous? Like a deciduous forest. Anyway, it's like a plant <laughs> that has antioxidant skin soothing properties. It's not super well researched, but uh, may have some antioxidant and some potential to help improve skin tone by uh, helping modulate factors in the skin surface that trigger the melasma, hyperpigmentation, discoloration. Uh, then we've got eggplant, really a uh, good astringent ingredient, which soaks up oils. We've got Forsythia suspensa, which is a skin conditioning antioxidant plant. We've got Angelica gigas root, an anti-inflammatory plant. Japanese gold thread extract, a soothing and antioxidant ingredient I'd never come across until this product. Liquor shirt extract, antioxidant skin soothing. We've got honeysickle, which is sometimes used as preservative, but also as a skin conditioning ingredient. Adenosine, cell communicating ingredient, and then vitamin E, hydrating antioxidant ingredient. Um, okay, in terms of acneogenic ingredients, we've only got two, and that is carbamer and vitamin E, so not terribly, uh, carbamer is pretty low, pretty low down in terms of acneogenic, and then uh, vitamin E, most people tolerate, okay, there's some that not as much, but pretty friendly for acne prone skin with only two ingredients of note, and I don't think, I think there's only been one one sunscreen I've ever reviewed that didn't have any acneogenic ingredients. I believe that was from Make Prem. I think that was the only one. So, or maybe the Purito uh, fake sunscreen didn't have any. I don't know. Okay, in terms of animal testing, this is vegan as well as cruelty free. So that's awesome for all of us. Uh, performance, super happy with this sunscreen. So now, now you see it's absorbed. It's been on my hand, what, four or five minutes now. It's pretty absorbed, uh, really happy. It's not a sunscreen I dread wearing. There's some, I still use a lot, but I'm not excited to put them on, like like the La Roche-Posay UV Mune, their new one. I don't dread putting it on, but I'm never like happy or excited. I know it's gonna do a good job and it's gonna protect me, but the texture of it and things like that, it just isn't, it isn't one like, I, like I'm happy to use, but I know it's gonna protect me, but this one, I'm like, I love using it, so. Um, and you know what, I've always tried these other techniques, like other people have mentioned, like, uh, if the UV index for the day is below two, I don't put sunscreen on. And I, every time I try that, it backfires on me, and the sun ends up coming out like four hours later. Go figure. So I'm not doing that method anymore, it just doesn't work for me. And I don't know. In Minnesota, it's usually pretty low, but anyway, except the summer. I don't know, we get the coldest of the cold and the hottest of the hot summer, so. I don't know. I gotta get out of, gotta get to like a, a more temperate area to live in. But anyway, uh, so anyway, love wearing this one. No signs of redness or irritation. Using this day after day after day. There's a lot of sunscreens I can use three or four times a week, but I can't use them every day in a row because my skin will start to get irritated. The only issue I seem to notice is not very sweat proof. Not a lot are, except for the Anessa brand. Um, but I really enjoy using this every day, regardless of the heat, humidity, and anything like that. Um, then in terms of the price, so this is the full size, which is 1.7 ounces, 50 milliliters. It retails for $24. So, I mean, usually I guarantee you'll probably be able to find it somewhere for a little bit at a discount, like $17 or $12 or shop around. 
but uh, it's still pretty affordable. So anyway, with a 15 being a perfect score, I gave this one a 13. Pretty darn good. Then if it weren't made in Korea, it'd probably be, do a little bit better. But anyway, I still think it's wise to do your own research on it. So um, anyway, interesting hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to check this one out yet or not. And if you have what your thoughts are. Or if you're trying any of the other sunscreens from Thank You Farmer. Uh, which ones have you tried and how'd you like them? So anyway, love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye guys.